Legend of Total War here, and uh, I was just about to go to bed, and then I was just going through my uh, Facebook feed just before I head off to, for the night, because it's midnight here in Australia, and then I saw that Total War has posted a new uh, Three Kingdoms Total War uh, in-engine trailer, f which showcases the campaign map, and I thought, okay, well, let's have a quick look at this, and I'll uh, give you guys my impressions, and let you guys know what my thoughts are on Total War Three Kingdoms as from what we know about it so far and let you guys know you know how hyped I am or not hyped I am about it so far anyway let's watch it and then I'll talk about it afterwards From this disorder, we have found opportunity. The will of heaven. The imperial seal. Did destiny choose me? The tyrant fled west to Chang'an, with his grip on the world failing. I knew what I had to do. And what of our so-called coalition? Nothing but selfish, conspiring warlords. We can trust only ourselves. My children will see our Sun Dynasty rise. You are my purpose, my destiny, the legacy of Sun Jian, Tiger of Jian Dong. Pre-order now and unlock Lu Bu as a playable lord, otherwise it's DLC. I don't know. That's just a little joke from Total War Warhammer, because they uh, made Chaos a pre-order bonus faction. <laughs> anyway, so let's, there's a few few key points I want to look at here and talk about it. So looking at this image here, this is the campaign map, I suppose. Um, obviously when you play it, it will have UI and stuff in it. But things to note is that we can see a little bit of Taiwan here. Maybe you'll be able to play on it, maybe you'll have settlements. Although, I don't know, based on this, like, I wouldn't expect a whole lot of naval combat in this game, just because... I mean, I know that the Three Kingdom era, I think it had, like, a lot of naval battles that were included up these rivers, right? But I don't think that Total War is going to do it, because they've, they've not really got a handle on it, in terms of, like, if you look at Rome 2, especially look at Rome 2 right now, um, the naval combat is garbage and it might be easier for them to just omit it rather than get it wrong and implement it into the game um, as creative assembly have said before they are quite happy to trash a mechanic if they feel like it's going to get criticized um, i'm paraphrasing a little bit there uh, but that's basically the gist of it and they've certainly done that many times in the past um, me personally i'm i'm okay with them releasing a mechanic that doesn't work properly as long as they did their best sort of thing um, what I'm not okay with is re them releasing campaigns with barely any mechanics. Um, anyway, so we can see a little bit of Korea up here. It does look a bit empty. Like, you can see all the different things, all the mountains and trees. It seems like in the distance over here, you can't really see much, so maybe they just haven't finished that yet. I, I don't know. Um, or maybe it's supposed to look like that. I'm not too familiar with China. But, you know, overall, graphically, it looks amazing. One thing you've got to give Creative Assembly credit for is that year after year, when they, every new game looks better than the previous one, except for Total War Taylor, which looks ugly as fuck. Um, and that's purely because of the art style. It's not because, you know, they it, it's like the resolution's bad or anything. It's just a dreary, ugly game. But it suits the time, time frame, I guess. It's just everything looks brown and ugly and honey, and I don't want that. Um, anyway, I prefer to keep my lands hun-free. Anyway, so 
Looks good, we can't really see any, any like actual content, it's just graphics at this point here. But that's to be expected from the trailer, so this is not like, oh, I'm not disappointed because it didn't go on about what's in the cities or anything. Although that would have been nice, but you know, maybe in the next trailer. Uh, another thing to look at, uh, so going back to here, right, when they're walking through this ruined city and there's, uh, let me see, like all these burning, burning village or whatever and people running away. This, I think, is pure trailer. I do not think this kind of stuff is going to be is representative of the game at all. And the reason why I think that is because it's never been in Total War before, and I really don't see any reason why it would be in there. There's nothing wrong with it being in the trailer, but if someone's thinking, oh, well, you know, you're going to get to watch the, the city burn to the ground after you win a battle, yeah, I doubt it. You know, I'm not saying it won't happen, but I just doubt it because I don't see what it adds to the game. And... Uh, apart from it just looking pretty. And the thing is, after you've seen that once or twice, you'd probably want to skip it. Anyway, that's, you know, just a little bit of thing there. Um, you know, so there's a well here in the uh, in the settlement, so that's probably consumed one of its two building slots, if you know what I mean. Um, and over here, so just looking at this stuff as well, again, it looks amazing. We can see what looks like a wall, kind of, I guess. I don't think it's the Great Wall of China, but it's something. Wouldn't it be cool if you could actually build walls across your province? And that that would be a feature that I would be very impressed with, if you could actually build a wall across your province to, you know, protect a choke point. Again, I don't think that's the case. I think this is purely just graphics. That's all I think it is, because there, there's nothing, nothing stopping here. But it just, it just came to my mind right then. So I don't know what this is, a shrine or something. We see what a city looks like. Uh, if we just go ahead here, you know, city, square, place with walls, you know, that's exactly what you'd expect. Now, we can see here with uh, Dong Dong, or whatever his name is, <laughs> I don't know them, so. But he seems to have a trail of caravans, or, um, or I guess the uh, baggage carts behind him, which is a first for an army to actually have a trail behind them, which is cool, because that would be accurate. Uh, an army doesn't walk in one, you know, square blob on the map. They usually trail off for, for kilometers at a time, or miles, depending on where you're from. Um, and, uh, is, you know, seeing caravans on the campa campaign map is nothing new, but, you know, because in Rome 1 and Medieval 2, the more trade there is between a road and a region, the more caravans you see across. Uh, but the armies wouldn't have anything attached to them, and it would always, ever since... You, like the beginning of Total War, an army has always been represented by one one standing person, the commander, and you know their army is is not present on the campaign map graphically. But we're starting to see a little bit of that in this. Uh, another thing to note is that you can see the depth is pretty amazing. Like you wouldn't be zooming in this much in the campaign map, I don't think, because they showed similar styles of of like cinematography with the Warhammer Total War trailers which was fine, it looked great, but when the gameplay came around, you couldn't zoom in that much without mods. So I think it'd be still a case of, you can rotate around the campaign map, but you're not gonna be able to zoom in this much in the campaign map. This is purely just for the trailer. That's what I think. Uh, there was something else I wanted to look at, so um, let me just see here. Yeah, right over here. This looks like what you're gonna see is when an army is in encamped mode. I don't think this is a city. That's what cities look like. I think that's just graphics. I don't think that's a minor city or anything. It could be. It could be a minor city. Don't know. Um, we can see a bridge here. Are we going to see bridge battles? We haven't seen. We haven't really seen a lot of bridge battles um, in a while. If it's just graphics, that's disappointing. But it would be good to see bridge battles because they were a pretty integral part of Total War until they were removed from it. Um, anyway, so an army camps. You can see it's. Um, tents around. I don't know if you can have like a fortified enemy camp, uh, fortified camp, sorry, where like you assault it. It's just like in Rome 2, where, um, you know, they build a camp, you have to attack it and they've got walls around it. You know, it's not a huge amount of walls. I don't know. Um, but look, in terms of the, the trailer, I think they did what they need to do. They they showed off some cool stuff. Um, and I think the trailer is good. Now, overall, what do I think about Total War Three Kingdoms? Well, we don't re I don't really know anything about Total War Three Kingdoms yet. I know that it looks good. I know that the soundtrack, at least the one track that we've heard so far, it's pretty pleasing to the ear. Um, what else do we know about the game? In terms of the campaign map, which is something that I'm, the campaign gameplay, something that I'm really interested in what they're going to do with it. Because here's the thing, um, I know I'm not going to get early access to it, I'm not, I'm not going to delude myself, um, which means I need to purchase it. Which this, this I'm a customer, right? 
Creative Assembly's job at this point here is to sell this game to me. I, because it's not a guarantee. I'm not yet sold on this game. And that's not to say that I'm not going to buy it. I'm saying that I'm not yet sold on it. There are certain things that I want to see that haven't been done yet. Now, maybe you think that's unreasonable that they should be talking about these things, but I want to make a bit of a comparison between Total War Three Kingdoms and Imperator Rome. Both games are coming out around the same time. Both games were announced around the same time. Um, and when people do compare Total War, the usually, well, Creative Assembly, the one company that is usually mentioned is Paradox. So more and more, Paradox is a Total War competitor, even though most people, have, well, everyone will admit, the main thing that makes Paradox uh, not be able to compete with Total War is the lack of manually resolved battles. And the one thing that Total War is not able to compete with in terms of Paradox is their complete lack of campaign uh, mechanics. They, you know, if you were to combine the, the campaign mechanics of Paradox with the battle mechanics of Total War, that would be an amazing game. And I don't even care how much DLC or how much it would cost, that would be an amazing game. However, we have two separate things, you know, and that's just the way it is. Now, as I said, I want to compare the two because they're both coming around at the same time and they're both... The job of both of these companies, because I'm not guaranteed early access for either company, I'm definitely not going to get it for th uh, for Three Kingdoms. I've burnt that bridge with, with Total War. That's done and dusted. Uh, but don't know about um, um, Paradox. It's not really relevant to this argument, though. Um, they're both vying for me as a customer to purchase their game. Now, the way Total War has gone about it is this, this, uh, this strategy of, look how awesome our game looks. It looks pretty. Hype, 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 hype graphics, graphics, graphics. And that's fine, and that sells it to some people. But that doesn't buy it to me, because like, there's lots of things that look great. You know, if I want to watch the Three Kingdoms movie, I'll go watch the Three Kingdoms movie sort of thing. Um, I'm very mechanics heavy. Uh, that's what I like in games. Again, it's not everyone, but there is a lot of people like me who don't just care about graphics. Okay, If a game is just aesthetically pleasing, I tend to get very bored very quickly and get irritated, as we have seen many times in the past. Um, what I do enjoy, and something that I've, I've played a lot with um, EU4, is games that may not be too graphics heavy. I mean, obviously it's important for a game to look nice, because a game that is ugly, even if it's mechanically sound, you get a bit irritated with it. But anyway, I tend to enjoy a, a game that has good mechanics over good graphics. Anyway, so the way that Paradox has been going on about selling uh, you know, marketing um, Imperator Rome is the complete opposite the way Three Kingdoms is going on about it. Um, not to say that any way, it, either way is bad, it's just it's just a comparison. And these two companies are in competition, whether or not people want to believe it or not. I think that more than ever now, Paradox is the main competitor to Total War. A lot of people are, are, who are sick of Total War games are moving over to Paradox games. And I'm not hearing a lot of Paradox games, Paradox gamers moving over to Total War. I don't know. I, I need to be more involved with the, total, with the Paradox community to know more. These are just, again, ideas that are rolling around my head. I don't know everything. Anyway, so how is Imperator Rome going up, on about it? Well, they, um, they had a, a trailer which told us nothing apart from, oh, it's Imperator Rome, which is basically in, uh, EU Rome 2. Um, and since then, they've done no cinematic trailers, and it's all been like developer diaries. It's completely different, but it's very interesting because what they do is every week they release a developer diary where they talk about a mechanic of the game. And people are at, people discuss it, some people like the mechanics, some people dislike the mechanics, but we have a pretty good idea of how Imperator Rome is going to play months before it's going to be released. Now, who can tell me how Three Kingdoms is going to play? Now, you can make a guess and say, well, is this going to play exactly like Rome 2? And you could be pretty close to the mark because Creative Assembly doesn't really innovate much between each title. Um, that's, or maybe maybe they've completely revamped it, but we don't know because they've said nothing about the campaign map. Again, it's not bad, but it's just something that's been left out and something that I'm hungry for information for. So, you know, again, if Creative Assembly wants to sell me this game, I need to know about what's in it because I'm going to play the game and not watch the movie, if you know what I mean. So that's the, that's the two big comparisons. I'm, at this stage here, much more leaning towards Imperator Rome rather than Three Kingdoms. 
if they're released at the same time, there's no guarantee I'm going to cover Total War Three Kingdoms over Imperial to Rome. Like, if Imperial to Rome seems like a more entertaining game for me personally, that's what I'm going to play. And I know a lot of other people are going to feel this way. So, again, a bit more focus on, on what, what's actually in the campaign would be appreciated, as opposed to look how good the graphics is. Now, again, I'm not going to say that the, the, the trailer was bad. The trailer was good. I enjoyed it. It was entertaining. They, they told the story about Sun Jin or whatever, and that this is going to be a pretty campaign map. Next up, okay, they've, they've shown us now the, you know, the, the original cinematic trailer. They've shown us the battles, uh, what, what, a, uh, what a siege battle w would look like, which I was hypercritical on, sorry, whatever. And, and now we've seen what the campaign map looks at looks like. Now I would really like to see from Creative Assembly less hype, more content. Let's see what this game is about. And just to bring a little bit of, um, you know, things that they have done right and wrong in the past. So, Thrones of Britannia as an example, and I don't, I don't really want to bring this up again, but let's talk a little bit about how the marketing campaign for Thrones of Britannia went and how it may have successfully driven sales but failed the game in terms of uh, establishing a player base. And we have to ask ourselves, what's Creative Assembly's goal here? Do they want to create an established player base for their, for their games where they have like 10 to 20,000 people playing it concurrently at peak time? Or do they just want to sell people a bunch of copies and then don't give a shit whether or not they play it again? Um, personally, I think it should be the, the, the first option the former, because um, if you take Thrones of Britannia as an example, um, not necessarily a bad game, okay, um, but a game that was not marketed badly in terms of, look, that game sold well from what I heard, but if you look at it now, it's only been released a, a few months, nobody is playing the fucking game, okay, and it's it has less players concurrently than Medieval 2, which is 11 years older than it, at any point. Um, Rome 2 has completely eclipsed it in terms of overall players. Even a Total War Attila, which is not a really good Total War game, completely outperforms Thrones of Britannia. And the main reason for this, I think, is for one thing, the, the game should have been marketed as basically Total War training wheels because it was that's basically what it was. But people didn't know what they were getting when they purchased it, which is why there's so many negative reviews. Nearly 50% negative reviews. Now, Watch, what, what I think would have been better would be if they sold fewer copies to people that didn't want to buy it. Now, when I made my video, I think I actually saved them a lot of negative reviews because I think a lot of people didn't purchase the game based on the information that I gave them. So if that's the thing. Do you, do you want to sell your game to people who shouldn't buy the game, who aren't going to be interested in it, or do you want to hit your target and not be deceptive about it? You know, that's the kind of st things that I want to see from Creative Assembly. I want them to, to actually be a little bit more specific with what they're doing with the game, hit the demographic they want to what they want to aim for. Look, if you want to hit casuals, just say, it. look, this game is for the casuals. This game is for the everyman. You know, if you only want to play two hours of Total War, that's great because this game can be finished in five hours. That's great. That's fine. You won't sell it to me, but it's better than selling it to me and then me being pissed off about it later. You know, um, it's just about a bit of a bit of transparency. Let us know what the game is about so that the right people can purchase it, and then people won't give you the shits afterwards about being deceptive or dishonest you know about you know having spyware in your in your in your software that kind of stuff um that's what paradox is doing they're being very transparent about what the game is i'm sure both games are going to be have bugs when it first comes out but again this is just what i want to see from the marketing campaign from total war obviously they have an idea in their mind about what they think is going to drive profit that's probably their primary drive i don't really give a fuck one way or another about their profit i care about the product I want the product to be amazing. And if the product is amazing, I don't care how much money they make. Whether it be billions or zillions, I really don't care. I'm not interested in their bottom line. I'm interested in the product. If the product is crap, I'm done with this franchise. That's that's how I feel about it. But, you know, like I said, I'm open to it and I want it to be good. It looks good. Is it going to be good? Don't know. We'll wait until we see some more information. Anyway, hopefully that didn't cross us too hypercritical. All I was doing was thinking out loud and giving you an idea of what I want to see from the marketing campaign. Anyway, we'll see you next time, fuckers.